All right, so in this example, we're going to look at three different types of interest at three different interest rates and see which one is the best. So Colleen and Bill, they bought a house for $150,000, the seller holding the second mortgage of $50,000. So they're going to pay the seller the $50,000 plus all the accrued interest five years from now. So obviously they want to pay the smallest amount that they can. So let's see which interest rate they should take. So simple interest at 14%, that means that our balance is going to be our principal plus our PRT. So 50,000 plus 50,000 times 14% times five years. All right, so there's our first option. So let's see how much they would have to pay back. So 50,000 plus 50,000 times the 14% times five years. All right, so they'd have to pay back $85,000. It's a lot of money. So now let's look at monthly compounded interest at 11.5%. So now we've got compound interest, so balance times one plus our interest rate, so 11.5% divide by four because that's yearly and we're compounding, oh, compounding monthly, so that's 12 times per year. That means over the course of five years, I'm gonna have 60, compound, 60 times that we compound. So, uh, sorry, our principal should have been 50,000. So let's do that, 50,000. So, times one plus are 11.5% divided by 12 raised to the 60th power. All right, so that's a little bit more. 88,614 dollars they would have to give them. All right, so obviously we don't want to go with choice B. Let's see if 11.25% compounded continuously is going to give us the best rate. So that's going to be principal times E to the R times T. All right, let's see what we get. 50,000 times E to the R even less than the one that we had with so less than compounding monthly but greater than our simple interest so we want to go with simple interest because we want to pay back the least amount of money of course for the sellers they would rather that they pick option B. But as the people paying, you wanna pick the cheapest one.